Hi there, I'm Tim from Signage Live, and today we're going to be talking about video walls. Video walls comes with a lot of complexity and understanding the differences and the options and the benefits and negatives of both of those options or the multiple options that we have is going to be really important to making sure we give you the right solution. There is a solution out there for everyone, but understanding what you're looking to achieve and how we can help you achieve that is going to be really key in making sure that you have the best digital signage experience with your video wall. So let's get started. So the screens that we have running up here right now are two bright sign players running in a sync group. And I'll show you this on my screen here. We've got our bottom screen and our top screen that are actually running identical playlists and they're both video files running top and bottom. This means that these players could be as far away from each other as they need to be and they'll still be synchronized. So it's ideal for something like 100 players or 10 players or 20 players and they're spotted across a location with a lot of distance between themselves, but you need to make sure that content is synchronized. There's no need for these two players to be connected to each other in terms of an actual physical cable. The only thing that you have to consider is they must be on the same network. You can't synchronize one player in uh, India over to another player in Egypt. It just doesn't work. They have to be on that same network because they're using that time code to make so sure they're synchronized together. The limitation with sync groups is the ability to have full screen content versus layout designs. So in previous videos, we've seen layout designs with multiple zones of content running on a screen. You can't do that with a sync group. They must be full screen. They also support a range of assets like images and videos, but they don't support things like widgets or anything that doesn't have a time code like a web page or anything like that. You also need to consider that both of the playlists, these happen to be two identical playlists or the same playlist actually running across the two players and the sync group is making sure that they're keeping in time with each other to display exactly the right content. However, you also have to consider that if you wanted to run two different playlists with two different types of content, that's absolutely possible, but you have to make sure that the total duration of that playlist is identical, because if it's trying to load content that's five minutes long versus seven minutes long, it's going to slowly or very quickly uh, desynchronize and not work as you expect it. So you have to consider your content, where, which is why sync groups are really beneficial for very specific case studies in creating this big wow factor screen that allows you to create multitudes of content, schedule that out, and utilize the synchronized function. Functionality. Now, there's a potential that this fits your use case perfectly. And if that's the case, then sync groups are for you and you want to consider that you're going to need a player per screen that you have. So you're going to need, in this case, we've got two bright signs running, so we need two bright signs for these two screens. But if we've got 20, 30, 40 screens that we want to synchronize, we just need to duplicate the numbers and do that across the board. However, I understand and we understand that there is probably a, a group of you here that go, this doesn't work for me, I need layout designs, I want to create a video wall with, let's say, a 4x4 or a 2x2, two two, and I want to be able to create that and have no limitations on what I can do with the content. And that is achievable. Let's talk about how that's done. Okay, so we've had a slight change of pace here. So instead of having the two bright sign devices or whichever device you need running in synchronization across these two screens, we've actually moved it to one player. And one player is now being plugged into this Matrox device. And that is then got two HDMI outs. In this case, this particular device actually supports up to four outputs. And those two are going to these two screens. What this has done is unified these two screens as if it was one large canvas. So we had two 1920 by 1080 screens, and now what we've actually got is a 1920 by 2160 total length. And this is currently configured in a two landscape screens into portrait, but with the quad head to go, you actually have the option to go and change that uh, setting to your own preference at any time. So you can go and select whether you want a one by one or a two by two or a two by one or whatever configuration in portrait and landscape as well, simply by clicking on the button and that will configure that screen. The easiest way to explain how this works is very similar to when you plug in an additional screen or monitor onto your computer. So instead of having just one layout or one canvas, you have two screens running one full screen canvas over the both of them. What this allows you to do is then suddenly utilize all of the features that Signage Live has by default with the layout designer and the scheduling and the zones and HTML5 content, but instead of running it over multiple devices, you're running it over one player, which then goes through this video wall matrix and displays it to your screens. The benefits are obviously that you can start to build out more complex content, more complex structures and utilize all of the functionality within Signage Live. The disadvantage, just to compare it to the synchronized functionality, is it does all have to be contained into one relatively close unit. You are going to have to have a physical cable go from this matrix into the two devices and the Matrox device will then display that screen. What's really good about this particular device is you can actually start to configure dead zone areas. So 
in this example, we don't, we're not configured really to display a full uh, video wall solution with four screens with no zones, but we can see we've got a gap here. So we could actually program this gap into the Matrox device so it understands that there is space between the two pieces of content and to consider that when actually displaying it. In the same way, you have the ability to go and check your parameters and make sure by using a tool that's built in here to actually see where there's any spaces or any bars. And it also allows you to select which screen you're using. So it will make sure it accounts for the small amount of bezel in the screen. So your content is always unified. You don't end up with these gaps. And especially if you're using multiple screens to display your messaging, you don't want a piece of the text to be cut off or you don't want your content to start looking a bit skewed and a bit swayed. So the Matrox Quad head to go is ideal for a situation like that. And it's really, really, really simple. Uh, what it does do is also save you on hardware costs in the long run because you don't need multiple devices, you need one player. One thing to bear in mind though is you are gonna need probably a little bit more of an expensive player to run this because previously we were running two devices or two players that were running on one screen each. However, now we only have one player and it's actually dealing with twice the amount of pixels. So you're probably gonna need something like a 4K player or something with a little bit more power. That continues to expand if you're looking at larger screen sizes. So if you're looking at having a two by two instead of just a one by one, then you're gonna need an even more powerful player because you've got more pixel density to work with. So overall, this just means that the quad head to go makes life much easier when it comes to dealing with your two by two video wall functionalities. I'll show you some video clips of us changing over the resolution. We won't be able to replicate that here on the screen, but obviously you can imagine if you want to configure a two by two portrait or even potentially have a, a full stretched all the way up with four screens going portrait, you can configure that within this device as well. So that's option two. So let's just quickly recap. We've got our sync option where we have multiple players running on multiple screens and then they synchronize together with the limitation of the fact that it has to be full screen and it has to be image or video files. Option two is to go with something like a matrix or the matrix quad head to go here as an example. And then we have multiple outputs that we put together and display it as a canvas across all of the screens. But you do need a slightly more powerful player on the back end to make sure you've got enough oomph to get that power across the players. And on top of that, you're also gonna to need to consider that they all gonna to need to be relatively close by to each other so you can get that HDMI feed through to each of the devices. Option three is looking at a player with multiple outputs built in. So for example, simply look, do a player that actually has four HDMI outputs. So that basically takes what Matrox and the quad head to go here are doing and what a player is and unifying them. So it's all one combined entity with four output devices. And very much like the Matrox device, this gives you the ability to use it as a canvas. It tends to be that these players are obviously slightly more on the expensive side because they have the power and capability to run up to four outputs and create create that video wall option. Both the second and third option here with the Matrox device and something like the Simply Nook with a multi-output player creates exactly the same experience. It just depends on which way you want to achieve it, whether you want to have your standalone player. Now, obviously bearing in mind with option two in the Matrox or the Matrix device here, you have the option to plug in pretty much any hardware device. So if you've already got your own existing player and you want to utilize that to turn it into a video wall, then potentially this would be the easier way to go for you because you're reutilizing your hardware and making sure you're being kind to the environment and making sure you're utilizing as much of your existing hardware as possible and also saving money as well. And then finally with that option three, with the in Intel Nook or any other multi-output device, you can utilize that in exactly the same way. So that's our options when it comes to video walls. Now, there is not a finite solution depending on what you want to do. So do feel free to reach out to us if you want to talk about your video wall solution. It's always best to understand exactly what all of your elements are. As always, with anything that we're talking about within digital signage, the first step is to understand what content you're looking to run. If you're looking to run things like apps or widgets or web pages, or you're looking to have a ticker or an item that slowly feeds from here to here, and then you've got a data source that changes via you know, a POS system or any kind of data source via HTML5, your sync groups probably aren't gonna be the way to move forward. You're gonna to need to look at either a matrix or a player with multiple outputs. However, it's always worth considering that in the very beginning, because if you are just looking to run video content all the time, then a sync wall might be better for you, especially if you're looking to manage across multiple areas in a business, or you're looking to do this not next to each other, but potentially a couple of feet to the left or to the right, or you're even potentially looking to create a really unified experience across a large area of a state. So that is video walls in a nutshell. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and we'll speak to you next time.